Live from Alachua, Florida, I'm Amrita Keeley. And I'm Nam Amrita. Welcome to Nectar Talks from the heart of New Raman Reti, the largest Hare Krishna community in North America and the home of thousands of bhakti yoga practitioners. In our ongoing interviews, we dig deep into our search for loving connections with Krishna and each other. With you, we hope to uncover the real-life stories and inner journeys of our vibrant community of friends and special guests. Like bees searching for nectar, we seek to extract pearls of wisdom from how they live their lives and the lessons they can impart to us and our listeners. If you're seeking nectar, look no further. All right, let's get started. Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome to... Hare Krishna! Hey, how's it going? (laughs) (laughs) We are on episode 15 of Nectar Talks, and uh, today is a special episode because we are going to not only interview our special guest, but also introduce him as a new member of our team here at Nectar Talks. Krishna Kishore has given us the The great honor. We're super excited um, to join our team, and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, getting to know him a little bit more today, find out what his background is, and um, and talk about how we're going to move forward. Remember, (laughs) Kelly, I just stole your part. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, uh, we're used to stealing each other's parts all the time. Anything else we're going to be doing today? Oh, yes. I have something up my sleeves. Okay. Well, I'll save it for later. Kish, I know you go by Kish a lot. How are you doing today? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. You know, it's definitely uh, better that I'm in your association. You guys are such a bright smile of Vaishnavas. I, I feel so, uh, how do you say, uh, excited. I feel excited to be able to go on this project with you and, and uh, see the nectar that we can extract from all the devotees. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we were yes. we were both, I feel like inspired. I know Namamrita was inspired to ask you to take part in this even before Nectar Talk started. I think that was yeah. That was an inspiration. And then, you know, the after we got going, um, I came, we had a talk about it and seemed like the perfect person to be interviewing devotees in this community yeah, and yeah. um <laughs> you had something very special and unique and um thank you thank you for joining us we're really really well i i got excited. like a step i took a step ahead i mean I, I got a step forward because you know i had the service during covid of of doing security and we had to do the uh how do you say um it Where's was, this at, uh, the, at the temple? Yeah, the contact tracing, right? So, oh yeah, really? Wow, that's a big deal. No, so actually, it was it was an amazing service because <laughs> I was learning the names of all the devotees. I mean, I you know you know, but and then time passes and then you forget, mm-hmm. and then I was able to memorize many of the names. And when they would come, you know, I wouldn't have to ask their name. I would get it or I'd guess it, and they'll play the game of like, I'll be like, wait, wait, what's your name again? And they'll be like. It's connected to the pastime of Kardama Muni. I'm like, Deva Huti! <laughs> <laughs> so, so now this is even gets more mm. personal where we, we get to learn more about them. So it's, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, you're actually connecting with my deep um, personal purpose with this show, which is that for me, this is a beautiful way to serve the Vaishnavas, just to get to know them on an in- individual basis. Um, I think it's a, just a wonderful service and, and it's personal growth for, for me to, to do this. So thanks again, Kish. Um, we wanna get to know a little bit about you and your background. We're gonna do a little uh, mini episode on you <laughs> as part of this. <laughs> so, um, you know, would you tell us a little bit about your upbringing and, um, you know, some interesting points about your, your background, some milestones in your life? Well, you know, I come, my family is from Colombia, South America. Mm-hmm. And um, 
my father and, and my mother have a, an amazing story of how they met at a young age, how they were introduced to Krishna consciousness. And uh, when they made the move to come to Miami, where Bali was born, mm -hmm. and then ultimately they- That's her brother. My, my brother, Balaram Tirta. Uh, and then uh, our family moved to New Taliban, and then that's where I was born. I was born mm. in Ole, Mississippi. All right. <laughs> so, so, so when I meet people, it's so funny, because when I meet people, they're like, where are you from? Uh, where were you born? And I'm like, Mississippi. And everyone's like, ah! like what? <laughs> like, Mississippi. Didn't yeah. expect that one, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then so I was, I was born in 86 and then in 89. So I was there for like two, three years. I have very faint, vague memories of my mm. childhood in New Taliban. Uh, but I do remember coming to Alachua and um, that was in 89. And I remember the small town that it wow. was. It's still a small town, but, you know, it's growing. Almost seems like exponentially these days. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, as far as background, I mean, how can I talk about my background with skipping, you know, my, my father's background, my mother's background? I, I just want to honor that a little bit because... Yeah, please. Um, you know, actually, my family, they, they were like an integral part to bring Krishna consciousness to Colombia. And uh, interesting, interesting connection. I mentioned uh, Bali. He's married to Danya, who is mm -hmm. the daughter of Javi Prabhu. And uh, like Javi, Dinabandhu Prabhu, some, you know, Prabhupada disciples, uh, they started traveling. They, they came to uh, Colombia and Javi Prabhu knew my father when he was a teenager. And it's just interesting, like how, you know, the, their children married, but right, um, right. so back in the day, like my, my father, I think he was 12 years old because he comes from a big family of 12, 13 children. And um, his older brothers, they heard about Krishna consciousness. They really, you know, they really liked the um, music of India. You know, uh, I, I think they were even the ones that were making like Bob Marley and George Harrison music big in Colombia. They were like really? introducing it to to the streets, to, you know, to the town and stuff. And um, so my father, you know, at the age of 12, 13, he had, you know, tapes of Srila Prabhupada, he, you know, he had... Um, I actually, Srila Prabhupada was still in this planet and he was going to visit Colombia, but, and then he got ill and uh, one of my uncles made the Vyasa son to receive him and everything. So, wow. Yeah. So, you know, my, I, when I talked to my father and I asked him a, a little bit of his background and, and he remembers the day when Srila Prabhupada left this planet and how it impacted the small little Hare Krishna community that was in Colombia at that time. Mm. And, um, and actually he told me another story that Srila Prabhupada knew about our family. Really? Uh, because the first meetings in ISKCON in Colombia happened in my father's home and in, in my grandfather's home. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, he, he had a big home and he was, he was a wealthy, well-known man. He uh, started off as a simple uh, mesero, is the way that you say it, a table cleaner and yeah. uh, waiter for, and then he started his own business. He became very wealthy uh, selling liquor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, my, my father's older brothers, you know, introduced to him, to, to my grandfather, uh, about Krishna consciousness and this. And they said, you know, we, we want to have meetings. They asked him, he said, sure. He was very pious. He was like, yeah, please bring them in. So they had the first ISKCON meeting there. And then um, my grandfather wanted to offer a large donation. And then uh, the story goes like this, where I don't know exactly who it was, but they asked Srila Prabhupada, they asked him, you know, there's a, a liquor store owner 
uh, an owner of a liquor store who's a wealthy man and mm -hmm. he wants to give a donation but it's you know it's with breaking with intoxication and stuff like that what should you know can we accept it what do we do and Shri Prabhupada you know very practical <laughs> Shri Prabhupada was he said of course you, you can receive the Lakshmi and, and then you purify it in devotional mm -hmm. service nice and 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 then kind of like a prediction type of thing. This is this is what came to me, you know, uh, the, the past, the story that came to me, that Shri Prabhupada said, many devotees will come from that family. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and, and it's crazy because now, like, I mean, we have, there's so many, you know, of our family members and cousins and uncles and aunts who have become devotees. And I feel like yeah. it's a direct blessing from Shri Prabhupada. Wow. Do you know how many there are devotee Ricos? I don't know the vote uh, as far as it, it, the exact number, but I remember, I, th I forgot when it was, but um, we were trying to tally all the cousins and stuff. And I think we got to like number 76 or something like wow. that. Cousins, and like, <laughs> I, I think just in Alachua, because, you know, there's like the... <laughs> A diaspora of Rico Dynasty. It just Rico keeps Dynasty. on like it keeps on growing yeah. of connections and stuff like wow. that. I think twenties and thirties or something like that. I, I like I, I I don't know the exact number, yeah, but yeah. Um, no, it is it is amazing, and you, you you are definitely part of this famous and amazing family. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the Ricos for those who aren't in this community. I mean, they are just the most loving, outgoing, passionate, exploding with just like <laughs> enthusiasm. For Krishna consciousness, and uh, it's just always a pleasure to be to be with you guys. Yes, yeah, so, so wow. I grew I grew up in that kind of passionate Latino culture. Right. My dad is like you know the personification of Utsaha, of enthusiasm. <laughs> Your dad is the famous Prabhananda Gore. <laughs> yeah, and um, <laughs> and so yeah, I grew up with you know the Latino upbringing, but like in a Vaishnav culture. You know, mm -hmm. with, you know, where the temple was very much the center, uh, you know, um, the Krishna consciousness, uh, our altar at home, doing bhajans every day. I mean, I grew up my whole life going to day schools, guru pools and stuff like that. So definitely and, you know, brought up in America. So there's my little, mm -hmm. uh, how do you say, mix of, of my upbringing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for, for sharing that beautiful background very colorful with all the the different places that uh, your your family is coming from did you want to share with us um when did you personally start to take krishna consciousness seriously like did you have sort of a you know for those of us who come into krishna consciousness and we've never heard of krishna before you tend to call it like a conversion experience or whatever. What is it like growing up in the movement and then sort of beginning to own it in your own right? Did that happen for you? Well, since you started the question with, do you want to, I'm just going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Too intimate. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a great question because uh, like Ritatva Jaswami, he would always tell us, he would say, okay, you're born in the movement, but you still have to join. He would always remind us mm -hmm. in Guru Kul mm -hmm. that, you know, there is, we still have to join. That's the reality. And uh, yeah, I mean, we grew up in such a color, colorful environment uh, with so many friends and, and you know, by Srila Prabhupada's mercy. I mean, I grew up in amazing day schools and Guru Kuls um, that gave me life-changing experiences. I mean, some of my best experiences in life is my time in my Gurukul. And um, thankfully, you know, thankfully I was uh, one of those Gurukulis who, who had that. I'm very grateful, you know, that, that I was able to have that. And I definitely honor all of, uh, how do you say, the, my, my peers and the elders who, who maybe went through a little bit more austerity. Um, but I, I, you know, I know it's, it's, a it's a touchy subject, but I guess I'm mentioning it because I was one of, I guess you could say, the fortunate ones to, to be able to experience such a positive experience, life-changing yeah. experience. And no, so I, I, I love, by the way, always recognizing that it hasn't always been a, a good experience for everybody. So I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, 
but I guess our, you know, the, the peers that I grew up with, um, I guess my age range, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, you know, we, we had very, very positive experiences. Um, at that time, I think the, the schools and, and the systems were much more developed. There was definitely, uh, uh, how do you say, corrections made in order to give uh, and facilitate a positive experience. And so, yeah, I mean, we had such a beautiful, colorful upbringing and, and you know, spiritual life and devotional life. I mean, we had mentors and guys like, like I mentioned, Ritata Jaswami, who, who really focused on trying to make Krishna, conscious, Krishna consciousness fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, but still, like you said, still, there's that point where, you know, you're kind of just going with the flow. And then mm -hmm. there's that transition point where you really take it seriously. And, um, you know, you want to understand on an everyday basis, what is spiritual life? Right. And that happened for me when my mother passed away. I was 19 years old and it mm -hmm. was a, definitely a, an impactful experience uh, losing my mother. Wow. And uh, that catapulted me to, to read Srila Prabhupada's books. Because, you know, we, we, would, mm -hmm. we, we, we memorized the shlokas and, and we knew the basic aspects of the philosophy and everything. But... You know, I, I joined in the sense of I read all the small books first and then uh, the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. And, uh, and I was inspired a lot by different disciples of Srila Prabhupada who were very encouraging. Actually, Ayendra Prabhu, he's the one that really blessed me to, to start reading. I even there's a, like a, a short little pastime where I asked him for a blessing and he was like, oh, I don't have, who, who am I to bless? I don't like some really humble mood. And then he said, actually, because we had these conversations, we had conversations. And I remember one time he was like, boy, you need to read more. <laughs> and so and then, you know, a little down the road, I was leaving and going, I was leaving from Brudge to come back. And then when I asked him for a blessing, he was first hesitant. And then he said, actually, and then he put his hand out like that. And he said, read on, read on, read uh -huh. on. And he said it three times. Mm -hmm. And I remember <laughs> feeling like spiritual energy emanating from him. Wow. And, and that blessing. And then from that's when I started to, I, I read the Bhagavad Gita in three days, you know, because I, I was just like shaktified from my Andrew <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> wow. blessing. And then so cool. after that, just the Srimad Bhagavatam like that. So. And then I would have to really say the experience where I really, really started to feel that, wow, Krishna consciousness is real. Mm -hmm. I would have to say is being immersed in Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Bhagavatam is really like, I felt like I was in another world when I was reading it. I just felt like, you know, I, I, there's this old movie that I think it's called The Never Ending Story. Mm -hmm. you know that one with the one where there's like a big creature that he rides like a flying dog looking dog thing. <laughs> and he like he goes into the story from the books you mm -hmm. know like and it's happening mm -hmm. with like that was happening in my life with the Srimad Bhagavatam and that's really what sealed the deal for me that you know I want to take this seriously wow wow and all all glories to your wonderful mother I never yeah. had the pleasure of meeting her but um, I know that there are celebrations for her every year, and I've, I, I feel like I've um, had the gift of receiving some, some mercy of, of learning about her just through um, her memory being kept alive by everyone in the community who so appreciated her. Yeah, I mean, she, you know, she was a s simple, like, I guess you could say, actually, Shiva Ram Swami, he wrote one after she passed away, he wrote. Um, what was her name? Oh, Matasachi Devi Dasi. Mm -hmm. And actually, someone just sent me that excerpt that Shiva Ram Swami wrote about my mother. Uh, I wish I, I had it on me. It's, it's short and sweet. Um, but basically, the conclusion of his message was that, see, you know, e even a simple householder woman, it like, like, just like, doesn't matter, you know, householder man householder woman doesn't have to be like some you know mm -hmm. scholarly just like a, a simple mother you know who who's her her main thing she was 
you know, one of her main occupations was being a housewife and being a mother. And she achieved perfection. Mm. She achieved the spiritual world. She achieved uh, so many deep things in Krishna consciousness because there was quite a few stories going around because my mother, she was having amazing transcendental experiences in her last years of her life. Wow. So, um, yeah, it, 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 for me, it was like, it, it, it was before I really dove deep into it. But when I started reading more, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm actually, I have dived deep. I'm just still on the search for it. But um, the, when now more, when I read from my Bhagavatam, I read these pastimes and Briha Bhagavatam Rita and everything, you know, I reflect on beautiful instances and beautiful pastimes. Like I'll, I'll tell you one is a, a personal story. I mean, one time my mother, she was in Jagannath Puri. She was like, in, in the last years of her life, she could still walk, um, but it, her health was declining rapidly. And, you know, she, she was given sometimes these this vision, you know, just like how, how Arjuna asked for the spiritual eyes from uh, Lord right. Krishna. And so somehow, you know, by the mercy of Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were many times where she was given spiritual eyes to see things that maybe other people weren't seeing, but that are actually there. Mm -hmm. And she, I, the, the, you know, I read in her diary um, after she passed away, um, one of the experiences she was having in Jagannath Puri, where when she was walking on the sand, she felt like every particle of dust was, was uh, you know, a lot conscious. And that every step she was taking, she was feeling it as like kisses under her feet. <laughs> and, and when she looked at the houses that were, you know, all the little huts and houses that were surrounding the beach area of, uh, of the ocean, you know, that they were all decorated with amazing jewels. Wow. And um, she, she, she was seeing, you know, Jagannath gave her some blessing of seeing a, this, you know, a spiritual splendor, the spiritual splendor of Jagannath Puri. And, uh, you know, we, we get some of these descriptions that in the banks of the Yamuna, there was jewels and, and this and that. So it's just, it's just amazing that, you know, she was able to experience these uh, really real life um, moments in, in Krishna consciousness. Wow. So yeah, Amrita, thank you so much for mentioning her. She's definitely a special soul and we try to honor her every day. Actually, tomorrow's her birthday, so I'm sure that my dad Oh, is wow. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, thank you for sharing, you know, at least one pastime. I mean, I'm I got goosebumps, you know. I mean, this is uh, a lot a lot to learn just in in that one story you shared. Yeah, really thank you. Um so <clears throat> Can I ask you a little bit about um, just shifting gears here? I wanted to, if you could share a little bit about the different services that you've performed over the years. Um, I mean, we know you as a, an incredible musician, obviously, with the Mayapuris, but I know you've been involved in a lot of other projects as well. So could you share some of those for us? Yeah, one of the uh, services was like passed down by Ritadra Goswami, which is you know, we call it the boys summer trip. Finally, a few years ago, uh, Dada Trey and myself, we went, we incorporated as a nonprofit called Our Future Hope. Hmm. There's a famous quote of Srila Prabhupada talking about the future generations being our future hope. And um, yeah, we, we've been doing that service for like 15 years. Um, and we've had a great team of, of, uh, friends who who have supported that legacy of Ritatu Jaswami, which he started these summer trips with it, it started from you know his ashram uh -huh. and then he would travel in the summer and so it had really like this really ashram vibe mm -hmm. and um yeah we're, we're trying to continue it COVID kind of slowed it down a little bit unfortunately but yeah still with the help of some community members here. Um, Mukunda Prabhu, I think you, you did an interview with him. Mm -hmm. Durika, Mukunda Prabhu, they've, we've been uh, tag teaming to 
to try to create opportunities for the youth in Alachua to get together once a mm -hmm. month. You know, we, we do uh, kirtan. I usually bring a special uh, guest, uh, like a guest speaker. And then we have prashadam and then games. And Nice. So that's one of the services, uh, like you mentioned, Mayapuris. Um, that, that's a fun, fun service. <laughs> Dan chanting and dancing, you can't really beat that. <laughs> and playing the flute and the wampers and the merdanga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. I, I mean, mean you, yeah. you're not going to say it, but ladies and gentlemen, Kish is an absolute fantastic musician. Beast. I mean, really, <laughs> when you play the flute, man, that's just amazing. Wow, thank you. How, how long did it take you to learn how to play the flute like that? You know, I started playing when I was 17. Uh -huh. I'm 35 now, so I've, I've been yeah, playing so a while. I wish while. I took it more seriously. I feel like I kind of like just has been staying in the same spot for a long time because lack of regulation. But uh, yeah. I, I still love to accompany the kirtans, and yeah. I, I hope to develop my my skill set and uh and yeah do more services also i i travel to india every year well also actually covid stopped that for a couple of years now but uh so when i go to india too i also like to be engaged in different services there um mm -hmm. there's a service something called the safari which uh, my spiritual mm -hmm. master he actually also continued like the legacy of Srila Prabhupada after the Gorpurnim festival, Srila Prabhupada would travel with devotees to Vrindavan. So he kind of expanded on that. And uh, a lot of times we follow the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu going to all the different places that he traveled in South India. And then also sometimes Vrindavan or some other places like that. Um, and I, 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 I've also been, uh, pretty active with his holiness bhakti mark swami doing some of his dramatical presentations and um you know just helping with some services here in mayapur and and, and in alachua uh, right now i'm serving as a member of the board it's been maybe a couple years a year and a half maybe a couple years um and that has been a, a very enlivening experience yeah. to see all the things that go into keeping the temple open and, and mm. uh, you know, little management things. It's definitely grown my appreciation for Mother mm. Mukia. Absolutely. How much service there is to do and, and people taking responsibility. And mm. yeah, I, I think those are my services. Yeah, well, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to go oh, look for more. I mean, you've been resume. busy. <laughs> I was um I was speaking with a friend the other day about how if we if we simply remain sincere in Krishna consciousness we'll be surprised at like the veins of service that open up and you know we can't even imagine what Krishna might have in store for us and just hearing what what you're already doing what you've already done I love how for example you said you know the Mayapuris oh it's just so fun it's also like extremely demanding i mean you've done tours like year after year you were traveling and you know every time i i was online i feel like i saw you somewhere else you know so it's just like it's amazing um no, it was pretty much 10 hear. years 10 years traveling nonstop, and i definitely felt it on my body i do feel it now like mm. i'm kind of like when the whole covid thing like slowed down the travels i was actually like Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was actually really nice and you know you know actually mentioning about devotional service one thing that um I, I you know i forgot who told me but it was really inspiring uh they were saying you know devotional service is actually such a privilege we take it for granted because sometimes it's so readily available but you know, having that, having the ability and having it readily available is actually such a that we don't understand it. Yeah, even when someone asks like, oh, you know, we need help with this. Can you do this or can you do that? It, it's actually such a blessing to have because mm. and then, you know, 
I didn't really understand it or realize it, but on the path, I have met many people who share their stories with me, who, who they're like, you know, I think it's because of some offenses in the past or whatever it is, but I, I, what I realized 10 years passed by and I didn't do any seva. Mm. And, and you know, and, and, and they were like, and, and it was like unknowingly knowing. And then when I wanted to do devotional service, it wasn't easy to get, mm. you know? So it, it was just, and when, when, when those stories will come to me, like on my path, I would be like, wow, let me try to stay in the fire of devotional service because, you know, I, yeah, I hopefully, hopefully, you know, down the road, I, you know, I'm not in that situation where I'm kind of like, you know, did not realizing that 10 years past, five years past, and I'm just in my own little bubble, you know? Right. So thinking, thinking along that line, I, I don't think that's going to happen. It doesn't, there's no indication that you will slow down whatsoever, but I am curious, how do you see your future? What are some of your goals in Krishna consciousness moving forward? Like, do you have specific goals or do you, or do you just have sort of an open heart ready to accept what Krishna brings? How does, how do, how does that, that work for you? You know, I, I do try to have that kind of be ready to be useful for whatever is needed. And um, I see that sometimes, though, in life, you got to pick and choose because mm -hmm. you can't put too much on your plate. And then you end up not being able to follow through or follow up. And yeah, and I have a problem so I, with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I do, too. And uh so I definitely, it's definitely a meditation because I, I do have an idea of like, what would be my ideal year, how my ideal deal year would look like, because, you know, it's a, in, in a practical sense, you have to see how can it fit in my schedule. Right. And for me, going to the Dom is super important. And, you know, just not being able to go since I, the last time I was there was April, 2020. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. 2020 April. It's just like, Oh my God, I need to go back, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I hope to be able to have in my mm -hmm. schedule because there's so much nurturing that happens when you're with sadhus and in the Dom and different sevas that you can do, and you can even be of service. And, and um, I've had the great opportunity of meeting a lot of people who they've never, or their first time in the Dom. And then I get to take them on, Vrindavan, Govardhan, Parikrams, take them to Mayapur, show them little, you know, enhance their experience of the Dham, hopefully. So I would definitely like having in my year, you know, a good chunk, at least four months of the, you know, of the year where I can be in the Dham. I also would like to dedicate time in South America um, to do preaching. I, I like to go every year as well, because, you know, like our community, Alachua community, we're so spoiled in the sense of mm. what we have. And, you know, I'll travel to different communities that are just so small, you know, very humble communities. And, and they, they keep the Krishna consciousness going, you know, and they don't have facilities, things like that, where it's just like, you know, and, and, and they're so thirsty and eager mm. to be, um, in association of devotees to, to be in a kirtan and everything like that, that it's, you know, I definitely want to be a part of helping, you know, the South American Yatras hmm. in, in my small way. And um, I, I know that I've heard when, when I've traveled there, I've done a few tours there and a lot of them, they, a lot of the devotees and even the, you know, temple leaders and stuff, they'll ask me like, can you can you convince some Prabhupada disciples and 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 I, I know that you're connected with sannyasis and and Prabhupada disciples and maybe gurus that to come travel to South America more you know because they just don't get a lot of you know of these elder Vaishnavas you know coming South America is, is not an easy type of place just to go and then you know there's austerity and everything like that but at the same time it's beautiful like when, once you go there and you meet the people and mm -hmm. and their their open hearts and the piety 
Um, so definitely that, and then also, you know, serving the Alacho community and helping develop the youth. Actually, I just got a mess. This is how I woke up this morning. I woke up the beautiful message from uh, one of the boys that came on the summer trip. His name is Arjuna, Arjuna Peñate from, from Dallas. And uh, he wrote me this message. He says, Hare Krishna Kish, I recently joined the ashram in Houston and I got some time to really think about the massive impact on my spiritual life the summer trip gave me. It changed my life. And it's the main reason I felt compelled to join the ashram. You've helped so many of my peers as well in Dallas stay with the temple and the movement. So thank you. That's how I woke up this morning. Wow. <laughs> and so, so I was just, I woke up and my heart was like, you know, <laughs> feeling. That's so nice. No, so, so that compels me to yeah. also to, you know, okay, I need to continue this seva to, to help develop the youth of our movement, the, you know, in North America and, so I guess that I, I, even though it's kind of happening, I, I hope that it's a little bit more regulated and stable in the future that mm -hmm. I can really do these things. Who knows how it can manifest, especially when families start growing, it becomes hard to do all of these things. But yeah, that's Let's the answer see. to that question. Yeah, no, I think it's so great that you you identified a need uh, in South America mm -hmm. that you can, you know, maybe uniquely contribute to with, you know, the the services you've done, your connections, your abilities. And I think it's great for you to tap into that. I also really wanted to express my appreciation for what you were saying earlier about the, the value of SEVA. Um, and how it's something that really needs to be honored and recognized for, you know, what what a what a special thing it is, the potency of it. Um, and I personally often ask my questions like, is this service, you know, is it worthwhile doing? Am I, you know, wasting time on this? Um, but hearing you just talk about service. And how some people, you know, feel like they've wasted their lives um, when they haven't done it. I think any service, there, it, I, I think there's no reason to ever question it. Actually, you know, service is service. There's, <laughs> and yeah. and there's plenty of it. And that's the the most uh, part of I think Lord Chaitanya's mag magnanimity is that there's just so much that we can all tap into. I mean, there's, it's just there for the taking. Yeah. And, and at the same time, you know, like, you know, maybe some people may feel like, Oh, I'm not doing anything with the temple or with like this or that, but we know also that, that there's so many different forms of, of Seva, yeah, just absolutely. having a healthy marriage and raising your children in, in right. a beautiful Christian conscious environment or in a healthy way. That is the devotional service in itself. But of course, it's also nice to have that kind of, you know, what is it? Um, put your boots on and get your, you know, get your hands dirty type of seva. <laughs> no, and, and there's devotees like that, like, you know, Manaram Prabhu is a, a great example that I saw where, you know, he's always ready to get his hands dirty. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I, I, I've seen him do a lot of, you know, different types of seva. Seva can be of so many forms washing pots the cleaning the bathrooms being on the stage you know setting up the lights or whatever there's just so many facets yeah. of what could be done so yeah it's unlimited <laughs> yeah and and, Actually, I, and i think it's uh it's important to yeah to, to to recognize that we can really serve in the ways that we're inclined to you know sometimes i know i struggled with well, I, you know, this is how I imagine service needs to be. And I'm not really into that, but I think it's really okay to try to figure out, you know, what service makes me happy in doing it as well. Yeah, that's definitely a blessing. Mm -hmm. And actually I have a, a question for you guys. Yes. Because, you know, you're talking, <laughs> you're talking about Seva and, and it's a Seva, what you guys are doing. I really appreciate uh, what you're doing for the community because there's so many 
devotees moving there's so many devotees here that are like hidden gems that you know mm. and um i mean i i, I was been i've been from alatra since 1989 but you know f for these past 10 12 years of traveling back and forth i think i don't know about like 35 percent of the people in this community you know <laughs> and i think this show that you guys are doing the service of you know kind of bringing out these these gems like revealing these beautiful gems to to us it's a, such a wonderful seva so i i kind of actually wanted to uh ask you guys like first what inspired you to do the seva and actually let's first start with that what what inspired you guys to take up this service of nectar talks um it actually came up as a a need to respond to the COVID situation. Um, I'd done some service with Neela um, for some time, Neela Kurana, and um, and it kind of came up that you know the world is shutting down, and Nuraman Reti doesn't really have a particular like online channel that people can tap into, and so initially it was uh, just trying to put together an online platform that was easily accessible, whether it was going to be for temple room classes um, or um, different topics, you know, maybe like a devotee from out of town might uh, come in and talk about a particular topic. And then the more we kind of stirred the idea, it just kind of concentrated into um, Nectar Talks, which the, the original purpose is, like you're saying, to showcase this uh, very large community where it's not easy to get to know everyone. And um, also have Krishna consciousness be presented in a way that's very real and down to earth um, and intimate, because that's very inspirational when we... Um, see how others are living the philosophy, how they practice in their own ways according to their life circumstances. Um, it just brings it to life. So those were kind of, uh, I think, the original purposes. Okay, so now I have another question because I, I want to know what I'm getting myself into. All right, <laughs> Being part of the team and everything. <laughs> So Amrita, this question is for you. Um, what has been your experience on Nectar Talks? You know, what have been some challenges, rewards? Fill us in. It has been, the experience has been amazing on so many levels. First of all, um, gosh, I could talk about this for a long time as we can with all of our services, but every devotee has a story. Every devotee has a very living, vibrant, unique way of expressing devotion or sharing realizations or things that are important to them. And I feel like every time we do this, it's, it's happening in the interview, it's happening in conversations afterwards. We're just learning. And I, I feel completely honored to have sort of a, a window into a, just an hour window into someone's heart. Um, I wish we could do it, it could go on forever. You know what I mean? It's yeah. very special. Some of the challenges are personal challenges. Um, you know, the fact that uh, I'm not an interviewer, I've never done interviews before. Um, sort of, uh, you know, realizing that I'm a, a beginner and that I have a lot to learn and uh, in a lot of ways that I can grow. Also, um, the way that we, that we um, approach people to be interviewed, I think sometimes we found actually that a lot of devotees are really nervous to be interviewed by us. Yeah. I don't know if it's because it's us interviewing them. It's or because of you, Amrita, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be part of it i'm sure it is she's gonna come after me with all her laughter 
<laughs> but um, something also that we've learned on my part by air is like taking care of the people that we interview and making sure that they feel comfortable and they feel safe and that they feel like they're, they're in charge of their interview and um, that, um, you know, what we talk about is on their terms and is it's what's important to them. And that really, you know, um, we, we want everyone to feel like, you know, you have nothing to lose and nothing to prove and um, we're just family. So it, it's important to us that we, um, that we develop that rapport, I guess, um, as we continue the service. And that has been something that we've learned by making mistakes. I'm speaking for myself. So to all of you, You're 14 speaking for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> interviewees who've come before, actually 15, because we had Shesha and Maru Mati come on as a, Prabhu has come on as a couple. Um, thank you for um, helping us to learn and grow. And um, it's been an amazing year. It's been a year, right? Just about. So. I think so. Yeah. Maybe even more. Yeah. What about you, Namamrita? How, how, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, I think overall, this is actually a, a really nice fit for me as a service. Um, like I was mentioning earlier, for some time I was questioning, you know, is, it, is this a valuable service? But actually, I've, we've been, get, been getting really nice feedback. Just today, I got feedback by a devotee who shared one of the episodes with her son. And he said it was, you know, really meaningful for him and his Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So every, every now and then we get these little uh, bits of feedback that do seem to justify the show. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I can relate with what you were saying, you know, really making our, um, our guests feel comfortable. Uh, we do these pre-interviews most of the time and um, we're trying to kind of see which themes are important to them. We ask them, you know, what do you not want to talk about? And really try to cater to them, let them take the lead as much as possible. Um, technology has been challenging, you know, we've definitely had our run-ins with that, but I think we're starting to figure out how to do it. Um, we may actually decide to um, do without the live um, part of the interviews because that's been really challenging with scheduling and all that. And we can kind of do it more on our own time if we have them pre-recorded. So. But yeah, overall, I've been really excited about this. Uh, it's just been often hard to fit it into my life and my schedule. Um, but uh, in the end, it's always been super worthwhile. And we get so much inspiration and joy out of doing it. Every time we're done with an episode, it's just exhilarating. Yeah, um, Krishna Kishore Prabhu, usually <laughs> before an episode, Namamrita and I are like, <sighs> like, this is this is a lot for us you know to, to fit it all in somehow or other and then we and then that krishna magic man it's just like every time we just we're just we're like we're floating you know we know you know what we mean but it's yeah. it's just it's a kind of magic it's a kind of <laughs> <laughs> right so and i heard recently who was i listening to i think it was um um oh who's the big distributor from silicon valley uh, Vaisheshika Prabhu. Prabhu. yeah yeah Vaisheshika Prabhu on uh, wisdom of the sages i think it was um he was sharing you know has anyone ever done a service that was not challenging you know and i think that's yeah. part of it krishna always tests our determination yeah, when I we want to I mean, do like, a service how challenging is it to be working with amrita for you i mean you know it must be <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> I'm just it's playing. Been I mean, nothing it's so easy to, it's an honor. It's the easiest thing to work <laughs> with Amrita. I think that's... <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Sarcasm 101. Yeah. No. I, th I think this is going to be a good team for sure with both Amrita Kelly and yourself. Really I feel sorry for you guys, actually. To to You're yeah. going to have to tolerate me and all my cheesy jokes and references to old music. Actually, it's not even old, but nowadays I feel like it is. <laughs> when you said you felt sorry for us, I didn't. Know, I didn't think you meant Namarita, and I thought you meant our our viewers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but the, that now that you have to uh, 
deal with me. Okay, I'm gonna have to hold this mic because my mic clicked. <laughs> Hey, you're now I'm the one asking the questions. <laughs> Hold on, let me put it in speaker view. Give you the full screen there. There you go. <laughs> Hello. Now our next question. So okay, so then I guess not, now that you know, that's it. I have the mic in my hand. I'm part of the trio. You're Here in. Go. This is it. The initiation are, is complete. Okay, how are we moving forward? Okay, I'm gonna take this one. Okay. It's kind of intuitive. I mean, three interviewers on one interviewee is a lot. That can, you know, that will be terrifying. <laughs> Ganging so. up on you. No one's going to want to come on the show. What about this? What about that? Huh? 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 <laughs> I mean, maybe we should do it once for, for fun. I think that would be hilarious. But what we're going to do is we are, we're going to be taking on our own solo interviews um, from time to time, which you've already seen. I'm on Rita and I do um, for a couple of devotees based on people that we know that maybe the others don't know, um, you know, or someone who we just have a personal interest in and learning about that we don't know. And then sometimes we're going to be tag teaming. So it'll be two, two of us, any combination thereof, and we'll take turns doing interviews. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. Just uh, excuse me, I have to plug in my computer because I'm the host and we don't want to lose this episode. Okay. No problem. I think I already I, I, lost I, I think I think that sounds like a good plan, Amrita, because <laughs> it, uh, it, you know, it changes, you know, uh, it, ch it changes it up. And I think actually it would be fun that sometimes we have us three together. I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, take yeah, that out of the equation. I think we should definitely have an anniversary edition of this, like a reunion. Like how's it like a, our ish the ghosty on public is the ghost <laughs> how are things going <laughs> i don't know why i'm laughing <laughs> is, is there anything else that marita the of you how you see us moving forward other than what amrita just shared um well i think it would be nice to uh, eventually get a new jingle that would include include you in it um and um other than that, um, Thank I'm you just really for a fire jingle. Yes, but we want to include you in there as well. But uh, I'm really looking forward to me. You're kind of like bringing in to a new level for the show. And what I mean by that is we kind of have our own group of devotees that, you know, we're really excited to interview. And so by adding you in, it just bring it, it widens that spectrum even more. Um, it's also going to add to the frequency. You know, we, our goal is kind of to be able to keep up two shows per month. So hopefully we'll be able to meet that goal. And, um, and just, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to bring with your own flavor. And, uh, you know, Maybe you're, you're kind of connected to that, the, uh, speaky the Spanish. Exactly. I was going to say you're connected <laughs> to the Spanish community so we could, you know, <laughs> definitely have some Spanish episodes and, I got to start working important. up on my Spanish. Oh my <laughs> yeah, God. you better be studying it. <laughs> I'm going to have Rada next to me. Like, she's my translator. <laughs> Why not? Hey, she's my Spanish to talk teacher. About, we wanted to talk about your beloved wife. She's the best. She yeah. She's the best. I, I, I really don't know her at all. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to make sure that we asked you a little bit about her, how you guys met. We missed that earlier. Yeah. No, all no, glory been married. To, you know, actually today she said, imagine if you didn't write me on Facebook. <laughs> but uh, we actually ended up, you know, really meeting in Vrindavan. Okay. And uh, no, she's just, she's just, an, she inspires me, you know, really um, keeps me in line. And uh, I, I owe a lot to her of, of, yeah, everything that's happening in my life right now. And even the services that I'm involved in. Um, we're both Pujaris for the Alatra Temple. And uh, she's definitely more engaged in that. But because of her association, definitely I'm on the altar now. Wow. And um, yeah, she's just awesome. And so, yeah, she's my Spanish teacher because, of course, <laughs> we grew up, you know, with the upbringing. Like my parents saw, they were like, man, these kids, that's it. No. They we're just speaking English. They'll speak to us in Spanish. We'll respond like poco espanol, you know. <laughs> and, and 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 they were like, "That's it," 
You know, they're like, <laughs> no more English in the house. Solo español en la casa. You know, like that's the only speaking Spanish in the house. And, um, you know, it did, didn't really happen. I mean, we would try, but it's not that our Spanish was terrible. I understood everything perfectly, but communicating. So when I met Rada, though, you know, <laughs> it's funny because when we were <laughs> chatting back and forth, I was like writing in Spanish. And uh, her her parents, when I go to visit in Bolivia, they told me a story that like she wrote and asked a question or something. And I responded in Spanish, but because she, I guess my Spanish is terrible. And um, <laughs> well, at least it was at that time. Now it's probably just bad. Um, you know, she was like she started crying because of my response, you know, and the, the thing is, you know, the, the parents actually the father you know they, he knows english you know so he was like no i don't think he's saying what you think you know <laughs> and, I, and then i ended up clearing it up like explaining myself and it was like oh she was like oh <laughs> you know but <laughs> since then since then you know i think that she was like all right i'm teaching this guy spanish so um yeah she's my she's my um dictionary spanish dictionary and we speak spanish together and She's always correcting me. So if we do Spanish interviews, I'm definitely going to need her correcting me. <laughs> oh, that yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, maybe, I don't know if we can pull it off technology-wise, but maybe we can even translate the episodes and have the uh, the captions in English underneath. <laughs> oh, wow. We'll have, to, was... we'll have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Right That's there. a lot of work. <laughs> it's a service opportunity for someone yeah. out there. <laughs> Anybody out there? <laughs> Hungry for some Seva. Yeah. All right. So I think we should wrap it up. But you said you had something up your sleeve earlier, Amrita Kelly. What was that all about? Before we wrap it up, we have to have rapid fire. Uh oh. <laughs> what, Bring him back the is, rapid what fire. What does that mean? I don't know. These are flames. And no, but rapid fire what? Rapid fire, rapid questions. fire questions. Oh, rapid fire questions. Okay, so we need rapid fire answers. All right, so can you I sh have you not listened to all of the Nectar Talks episodes? You would know this if you had. I'm sorry. What was our fifth <laughs> question in episode three? Oh my god, I get an F. All right, so since I'm joining in to the group now, can yes. I have the honors of the first rapid fire question? Okay, who's right, this for? Okay, I'm Rita. I'm gonna start with you. But this has to just be from the top of the dome. The first thing that comes to mind. I know there's going to be like five answers, but my heart matter. already started increasing speed. Okay, ready? Go. The first thing that comes to mind. What's your favorite prashad in preparation? Three, two, one, go. Lug lose. Okay, Lug -lose. Uh, uh Raita. Wow. Wow. Nice. That is very I appreciate something. some good quality right there too, man. <laughs> what about you? What about you? Kachoris. Oh. Is it because it starts with Kishori? <laughs> it's Kachori. Kachoris are so good. Actually, yeah, my grandma, she says my name. She's like Kichor. Kind of does sound like Kachori. <laughs> I'll say the weight of my heart is also like, okay, you said no, no five answers, but super greasy prasadam with like paneer in it. Wow. Oh, no, I can I can keep on going, too. But, you know, we're kitchen religion. So that's a new episode. Yeah. All right. Who's got the next one? Um, The next one. Well, we don't really. Oh, you go ahead. All right. Describe yourself in three words. Kish, you go first. Oh, my Krishna. Uh, oh, that That's it right there. <laughs> 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 Granted. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Amrita? <laughs> um, reflective, weird, and kind. Oh, I I agree with that. I agree too. <laughs> what about you, <laughs> right. Amrita? The weird no, I don't, part, I don't huh? want to answer it. Answer it. <laughs> Come on, you Answer ask it. the question, you can't escape. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Um, let's see. Um, uh, over uh, committed <laughs> to <laughs> over committed to doing things. 
That's not that's not a word. Um, <laughs> that's five words. Okay, you overcommitted, overcommitted. Um, uh, I'm just gonna not count. <laughs> follow it through and um, weak. <laughs> Uh, physically humble. weak. <laughs> okay, add humble say, to the list. Add humble to the list. I think Four for times. the next next episode, we should do name this person with three words, and so we get to glorify a Tokes. little bit. That's better. <laughs> better. All right. Okay. So else? I have I have one other. Okay, I have a question, but you know, since it's rapid fire, the answer you know it's a deeper question, but the answer has to be succinct as possible. Okay. 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 All right. So number Marita, what motivates you slash inspires you to keep going in Christian consciousness? Um, to connect through others experience <laughs> of Krishna consciousness with the actual potency of it, because sometimes I lose it on my own but by sharing it with others or discussing it with others then i i can connect with it very tangibly hashtag nectar talks yes. <laughs> that, that was, was beautiful. Like, that was a promo for nectar talks right that was there. a plug right there nice nice uh, answer what about you amrita kelly what was the question again what motivates you inspires you to keep going in christian consciousness It is undeniably shelter, like real shelter every day um, without question. And the devotees are what keep me in it 100%. And knowing that there are a lot of people out there just like me who need the shelter and are looking for it either directly or indirectly um you know that keeps me wanting to to share it somehow or other wow beautiful beautiful <laughs> <laughs> and what about you krishna kishore well i'm gonna you know that testimonial that that i read earlier about the the letter that i received the little message that mm. i received you know, those testimonials, when, when I hear from the, the boys that we've traveled with, where they really have like a eye-opening spiritual experience, that definitely keeps me going. That makes me feel like, hey, you know what? I got to step up to the plate. I got to do something. I got to keep on going, um, sharing what was given to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. Hi. All right. Well, I think this is a great place to end on our personal hey. meditations why we yeah. why we keep going in well, you guys didn't want to answer question. the question of whether you'd rather jump under jagannath's card or <laughs> right <laughs> or choke on a on a jagannath tug <laughs> you know those are sweets those... <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a I'll good pass. question who came up with that one again <laughs> it was you came up with that one <laughs> No, but you know, this was actually thank thank you so much for this episode because you know it was kind of maybe it's a little long because we did like an introduction, like an episode about me, I guess, a little bit, but and then also kind of how we're gonna work together, introducing me to this uh wonderful program that you're doing. And I'm really looking forward to being able to share more experience experiences with you guys and with uh community our community members. No, oh, welcome, yay. welcome, and thank you for uh for joining us we're really i'm i'm really excited seeing how how this is uh gonna expand thanks to you <laughs> thank you so yeah. much Hare krishna everyone thank you hey. for <laughs> thank you so for tuning much. in and we'll see you <laughs> next time for episode 16 all right Haribo. okay <laughs> mic drop <laughs> 16 what <laughs> Arivo. Arivo. Hare Krishna.